Hey, welcome back to Race Create Cards. I am so glad you are here. Um, just real quick before we get into today's video, you've only got, let's see, today's May the 6th. You've only got until uh, May the 10th to sign up for the Paper Pumpkin Celebrating in Color Kit. So if you are not currently a member, please head over to Ray's Create Cards at StampingUp.net. And I do have a sign-up link there where you can get in on all the goodies that Paper Pumpkin has to offer. It's going to be like $22.50 a month. And in your kit, you get everything you need except possibly for a pair of snips or baby wipes or something that you will use to clean your stamp set. They all come with a stamp set. They all come with a, um, a mini ink cube. Um, so you're covered in your very first kit. If you've never signed up, you will actually get a free acrylic block that you can mount your stamps on. Now, they don't send those in every kit, but they are going to be celebrating the new in colors that just launched. Um, but there is an extra incentive in the upcoming kit for um, May. And there's going to be a golden voucher inside some of the paper pumpkin boxes, okay? And here in the U.S., it's going to be worth $25 in stamping up products. Not to mention all the fun in working with these gorgeous new in colors. So if you haven't signed up for it yet, if you have any questions, um, yeah, please reach out and let me know. Now, real quick, I wanted to recap also. Running this month, they have an awesome starter kit special. So the normal offer is $99 and you get $125 free in product of your choice. You can pick out anything you would like out of the catalog. The shipping is free. You get a free paper pumpkin kit inside your starter kit. But this month, man, they have really gone over the top. So let me recap it real quick for you. Here are the five new ink colors. You get every stamp pad. These are not the mini ink spots. These are the full-size, real-deal ink pads. They are normally $8 each. Guys, that's $40 right there. And if you were to order them, you would also pay shipping and handling and tax on each one of them, right? They are also putting in the new in color DSP package. There's 40 sheets in there. It's normally $12 plus shipping and handling plus tax, right? And there is a pack of all of the in colors cardstock. This is eight and a half by 11. You get 20 sheets. There are four sheets for each of the five new in colors. That's normally $9.50 plus shipping and handling, plus tax. You also get this wonderful grid paper. I think I told y'all in the last video, guess who forgot to order the grid paper? Um, <laughs> but that's okay. I'll get it in on my next order. But you get 25 sheets. Now, these are big. They are 11 by 17. They have got you covered. And you get five sheets of each of the five new end colors that's normally $9 plus shipping and handling plus tax. So, do your math, okay? So, write down your item cost, whatever product or all the products. You're going to times that by 11% shipping and handling, okay? And whatever that amount is, you're going to then take that amount and you're going to go times your local tax rate. Now, some of you are fortunate enough to live in an area where you may only have 6% tax. I envy you. Um, mine here uh, in, ten in East Tennessee is 9.75%. It's almost another 10% in tax. So then you're going to take your item cost plus your shipping and handling that you figured plus your personal tax rate and you're going to add them all together to get the grand total of how much this starter kit is going to save you in product. Plus, you also get to um, 
get in on the ground floor of new catalogs. You get to see them before anyone else sees them. You get to pre-order before it goes live to the public. And so there are just so many benefits. Not to mention, you will get at least a 20% discount on all future orders. And what is not to love about that, okay? All right, I've got my little piece of paper up uh, down here on my mat. It's to kind of protect my mat because I've noticed that red uh, tends to stain it. I've got a couple of stains on here from red inks, which, you know, is no big deal, but that's okay. So, the card that we are going to do today is using every one of the new in colors. And I have decided to feature the Blessings of Home. Now, you may remember it was in the um, last mini catalog. Actually, it, yeah, it's still current. It technically goes through um, uh, the, the month of June while supplies last because all this stuff is on the last chance sale, right? And then there are coordinating dies and they are called Flowers of Home. And so I'm, we have used these today too as well. And the only other stamp set I'm bringing in, actually I'm not using any of the stamp set. I'm going to be using the dies in the Sending Smile set um, simply because it has sentiment dies in here and that's what we're going to cut out our sentiment today for the blessings of home card now previously any personal blessings of home cards i made they were they tend to be kind of subdued uh they were more what i would call laid laid back cards peaceful cards today the one we're going to make is going to be loud and proud and for those of you who love the vibrant colors, this is going to be right up your alley. For those of you who don't like really bright colors, just understand you can take that same stamp set, you can take those same dots, and you can do you, right? Okay, what I did is I went ahead and I pre-stamped the largest flower in that set, which is this one. And actually, when you're looking at the front of the cover, it's it's actually showing it go laying this way. However, my vision for today is it's going to be more in an up and down. Maybe, maybe not quite. It's, it's going to be tilted a little bit. But this whole design just lends itself well. And I stamped it really dark in the Memento Black ink. Um, I wanted to stamp it. I wanted to make sure that was a good, rich black for this card because of the vibrant colors. Um, normally, the kind of stamping I will do, it'll come out something more like this. I mean, yes, you can plainly see it, but as you can tell, it's not quite as intense as the one I have already done here and, and pre-cut. So, um, this is good. I'm going to save this for another project. But just for today, I really wanted that vibrant black. Now, here's the thing. We're going to color with stamping blends. And so what I have done is I have just the light colors of all the new end colors. I have the light starry sky. I have the light parakeet party. I have the light um, orchid oasis. I have the light Tahitian tide. Words are hard today. <laughs> and I have the light and the dark of the Sweet Sorbet, okay? So let's just go ahead and get started with this. Um, if watching uh, a video and someone coloring is not your thing, that's okay. Uh, feel free to skip ahead to see the final design. That's totally up to you. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and start coloring and yes, this is going to take a hot minute. It absolutely will. And I'm going to have to be careful. See, I almost got into another flower there. And that one is not going to be sweet sorbet. But I wanted this large one and uh, the one next to it to be in the sweet sorbet. And this color um, kind of reminds me a little bit of Poppy Parade, except when you get the two colors together, 
uh, you're going to see that um, this one has got more of a pink tone to it. So it's not really red, but it's not really pink. Certainly not orange. Um, you know, Poppy Parade is more of a red orange. This is more of a red pink. Is that possible? Just, is that a color? <laughs> is that an accurate description? Or you could call it a pink red, whichever. I hope everybody's been having a really good week. I know I'm going to be a little bit late getting this video uploaded later than normal. I normally, I'm, I've gotten into a habit of where I will upload the video and then release it for public viewing on Friday morning. And here it is almost one o'clock in the afternoon on May 5th. So yeah, I've really got to get going, got to get cracked. I'm sorry. Did I just say May 5th? I did. May 6th. Sorry. No, nope, you're not hallucinating. It was me. I said it wrong. But I do hope everybody's been having a really good week. So we have a neighbor. And they're kind of quiet and they're to themselves. And, you know, they're really good people. I mean, they really are. <laughs> They've decided to get some new dogs. Three of them. At one time. Now, these little doggies are so cute. They're all so different from each other. But here's the thing. They run the roost. And so my yard is just as good to them as their yard. And I am an animal lover. I love dogs, especially cats. Um, a lot of you may know that uh, back on um, Veterans Day last year, we had to put Skeeter down. We had had her for, oh, I don't know, um, 15 years, something like that, maybe. Um, I, I know at the time I kind of felt cheated. I thought, you know, there's an awful lot of people that have their um, cats for a good 15 years, 18 years, 16 years, whatever, and uh, I didn't understand why we didn't get to have her for any longer than what we did, but it was still good, right? Still a lot of good, uh, oh, a lot of good uh, memories and time with her. And she was very sweet. She was very loving. And, uh, yeah, we still miss her. We do. Okay, those are the only two flowers that I'm going to do in the Sweet Sorbet. And those two are going to take the longest because... Because they're so big, I am going to go in with the dark, and I'm just going to do just a little bit of shading. And, you know, we all tend to kind of do our things a little bit differently. Um, if you have stamp sets that you love to use your stamping blends with, you know, you do you. Some people want to uh, go ahead and do all their dark shading first. And then go back over it with uh, the lighter tone to blend it in. I tend to go with the light color overall. Then I'll go back in and put in my darker color. And I got to be honest, you're probably not seeing very much of this on here. Simply because it is such a bright color. And even the light version still has some darkness to it. So you're probably not going to see too much of a difference. When I get done blending, I'll hold it up and let you see if you can kind of tell that, uh, yeah, it was worth the extra effort on the red ones. The others are small enough. I felt like I could get away with with not doing the, uh, the dark, which is why all of these that I have out are pretty much just in the light. And so I will then take this and I just simply scribble back over where I put the dark in. And you don't have to like totally put in a whole nother layer of the light color. Just kind of make sure that gets blended in. Um, air stamping blends are famous for not leaving harsh edges um, once all is said and done. And so I'm not going all the way to the end. And I think that actually gives a little bit more color definition. You have some areas that are going to be a little lighter than the others. 
Um, and when you're doing this, even with the sweet sorbet, as vivid as it is, I can tell exactly where I have blended and where I have not. So, and, and again, that's one of those things that when you're doing it in person, um, that, that, that's really a benefit. All right. So I'm just about done with this and I'm hoping guys that y'all really like the way this, uh, whole card and my vision for it comes out. We are actually going to be using vellum today. Haha. <laughs> so when we get to that point, um, I think at this point I'm going to actually go in. The only other thing that's really going to take a hot minute is the leaves. And I am just using the light parakeet party. A lot of these leaves are small. Honestly, I'm, and, and a lot of them are big. But I am just not going to take the time to do the shading on the leaves. I felt like um, I could get by with maybe not doing that. However, as this progresses, I may make myself out to be a liar. And I may end up going back in there and, and doing just that. So, we'll see. I mean, that, that's a pretty good size leaf right there, and there's some down here, but honestly, most of them are just small, and I feel like Parakeet Party is bright and joyful enough that uh, it'll probably just stand alone as its own color without needing the shading. So, hopefully I can get this done quickly without going out of the lines and making a really big mess. <clears throat> okay. I've got a little bit of a tickle in my throat. Probably because I've been um, running around trying to multitask this morning. <laughs> I don't multitask very well. Um, my husband is really good at multitasking. And he's one of those people. He can be Deep on a project, right? It doesn't matter. I can interrupt him with a question or a request. And he just changes tracks so effortlessly. I mean, I'm envious of people that can do that, right? Me, I can't do that. If I'm deep in thought on something, um, it's like, what? <laughs> if you <laughs> interrupt me and then... Once I'm derailed into something else, I have a really hard time getting back to um, what I was doing to begin with. Like, it takes me a minute to regroup and get back on track, right? All right, can I get these open? These are awesome. They are really awesome. All right, these right here, I want to do an Orchid Oasis. I hope I've got Orchid Oasis. Yes, I have the Light Orchid Oasis. And, of course, it's kind of a deepish color in its own right. Not as deep as Scarry, Starry Sky, but it's deep. And there is going to be one color I'm going to pull out of my stash for doing the middle of the flowers that uh, is not an end color. And I think I'm going to use... Um, Mango Melody for the middle of the flowers. Um, we'll see how that goes. All right. Let me make sure I don't color in the middle of the flower. There we go. Got that one. Let's go ahead and finish this one up. Again, no shading, but uh, if you have this set, and I suspect many of you do, if you have this set, you do you. You know, you want to take the time to do that. Um, this is definitely not a card design that is going to lend itself for mass producing. Uh, yours truly is involved in uh, card ministry um, at our church. And... Uh, when we are designing and mass producing cards, we obviously cannot um, get into cards that are this detailed. It would take way too much time and uh, 
You just have to kind of go with those simple designs. And honestly, even on a personal basis, I prefer um, the simple designs. I really do. Um, but every now and then, you want to do something a little extra. Um, I was trying to figure out for today whether or not I wanted to do um, like a fun fold or something like that with you. And this kind of won out. Um, it's one of those things that uh, when you're by yourself in your card room, or even if you have someone crafting with you, it can just be really super nice to um, have a relaxing time. And for me, coloring is relaxing. Now, it may not be for you, but it is for me. It's really relaxing for me. So, um, honestly, I kind of messed up. I really wanted this flower to be in Tahitian Tide in the middle of the Orchid Oasis. And I got to run in my mouth here and forgot what I was doing. Um, but that's okay. Um... Nobody but you guys would ever know that I meant for this one to be Tahitian Tide. So we're going to come right up here and we're going to fit in a Tahitian Tide. Um, one thing I didn't want to do <laughs> with all the blues and the uh, sweet sorbet, I didn't want to make a card that looked red, white, and blue. I mean, that's coming up, right? If you're into making patriotic cards, all that kind of thing, that's awesome. But uh, I did not want this one <laughs> to look patriotic in the slightest. Well, guys, I am doing this just as fast as I know how. And I'll tell you something. Like any place, there are those little tiny white areas. It drives me crazy. The only time I'll leave a white area is if I know I'm going to go back in and do some shading. So, because I know I will get that took care of. All right, guys. So, so far, we have Sweet Sorbet, Parakeet Party, Orchid Oasis, Tahitian Tide. The only one left, Starry Sky. And I do have the light Starry Sky. And we're just going to make these right here, Starry Sky, these little fellas. Seeing that I messed up my original thinking for how I wanted to color this. And, you know, initially, when you're working with these dark color colors with the stamping blends, it may look like you're going to totally cover up what you stamped, your stamped image. I promise you, you won't. You absolutely won't. It will be just fine. Uh, you just have to kind of give it a hot minute for it to dry, and then it's fine. All right. Really avoiding the middle there. I would hate to accidentally cover that up and not be able to put in my mango melody for the center of the flower. All right. Okay. Have I missed anything in the way of a leaf? don't think so. Okay, did I have my mango melody out? No, I did not. And I think I want to go with the dark mango melody. So, here we go. Here we go. Since all the other colors are so vibrant and intense, I wanted to match that. I didn't want to go with Daffodil Delight is a good choice for the middle of flowers as well when you're wanting a yellow center in a flower. Um, but honestly, I, I think with this as an intense looking as it is, I think the Mango Melody would fit in very well here. Okay, let me get that. That one. Not much there to color. And some of these, just little hints. But that's okay. It all adds to the overall look of the finished product. And we're almost there, guys. I have i don't know how long I've been on this video so far. And, you know, I've explained to y'all, I wish all of my videos could be like 10 or 15 minutes and be quality videos. 
Um, but the sad truth is we can't always do those really short videos if we want to show you um, uh, different techniques and different supplies and things. And so for those of you who may be on the fence about your stamping blends and ordering those, they're amazing, guys. They really are. All right, let me kind of hold this up. And I don't know, especially on the sweet sorbet flowers, I don't know if in, in the camera, if you can tell where there's any of that shading or not, but I can. Okay. All right. My card base is basic white, eight and a half by five and a half and scored at four and a quarter. And I've already pre-glued a layer of the Tahitian Tide on the inside. Okay. Um, I have also already pre-stamped, and this is also out of the blessings of home. You are a real blessing to everyone around you. And somehow when I was doing this, I don't know if you can see it, but I got a little tiny little black something something there. When I write my sentiment, I'll cover that right up, okay? Now, I did stamp from the smaller bouquet. Now, there is a bouquet that is smaller, and I just got part of that image here on the inside and so, yes, I am going to need to um, color that as well. So, let me get back out my light sorbet. Yes, that's my light. And we're going to color this one just very quickly. I'm not doing any shading for the inside. Um, I'm just doing this to bring some of the outer design to the inside of the card. So, we're going to just color this one in sweet sorbet. Then there's only one other one to color, and I definitely want that in Tahitian Tide because I'm using Tahitian Tide cardstock in the design of this card. Okay. But it's, you know, sometimes it's just fun. Take a deep breath and go, hey, let's just do more than just a regular stamps, ink, and paper card and maybe an occasional die cutting, you know, let's, let, let's just step that up a little bit more. All right, let me go back to the parakeet part and let's get the leaves real quick. Now, these leaves are smaller and I have to kind of slow down and get those filled in easy, sweetly, nicely. Okay. You know, back when adult coloring got really popular, I got caught up in that. But um, also, I was not, um, I was not uh, part of stamping up. I didn't know anything at that point about doing homemade cards. So, um, that, that was my thing. Um, I started out with a 12 count set of basic Prisma colors. And, um, graduated from there, and before all was said and done, I ended up, um, I ended up buying the whole 150 count set. They may have bigger sets now, um, and, and it was quite an investment, but boy, have I had fun doing that adult coloring. Now that I have discovered the love of making homemade cards, I don't have time to do the adult coloring, guys. I wish I did, and I envy people that can uh, allocate time to have more than one hobby, but uh, when I did adult coloring, like, I really got into it, like, super heavy got into it, so there's a little bud right there. Oop, wrong end, but you know what? I'm going to go with it. And I'm just going to pretend that that is a bud for an orchid oasis flower. All right, let's get the middle of our flowers. And then we have got the inside of this card done. I'm seeing some white area. Hang on, guys. Drives me crazy. Okay. All right, I think we've got that. And I see a little something right there coming right off the edge. And you know what? I'm going to pretend 
right or wrong that that is another leaf and we're just going to pop in a tiny bit of parakeet party there we go now let's turn this back around okay so now we have the inside of the card done so let's go ahead and get that glued in and you know i always try when i'm doing these videos whoops not so much Ooh. Um, I always try to um, include some tips and tricks, and one of the tips and tricks I should have told you, and you've probably already heard by now, I'm sure, but just in case, a lot of us like to repeat the same old basic stuff. Um, definitely the reason, you know, I had scrap paper under here, you can see how they bled through a little bit. The chances that it would have actually bled enough to go onto my mat and stain it Ah, uh, probably not. However, uh, just to be on the safe side, I've got that scratch paper under there. And not everyone has a silicone mat, you know, under their, their stuff. And so, if you're working on a desk, a dining room table, or kitchen counter, wherever you're working, absolutely be sure and, and put something down to, to protect that. All right, so now the outside of the card is naked. Okay, so I also cut a piece of pool, par pool party, <laughs> Tahitian Tide, um, that is four and a quarter. This piece and this piece, inside and outside, is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Y'all know me by now, my skinny borders. Believe it or not, I don't always layer things that way. It just happens to kind of be my my favorite. So let's just go ahead and lay this down to the front. And, and I like I like it laying flat so it doesn't fight me. We're gonna lay this on here. And then we are going to bring in our vellum layer. And I hope as you start to see this design come together, it may inspire ideas for you. All right, we had, and it has carried over into the new catalog. This is from the vellum that is called, um, is on page 139 of the new catalog, and it's called Layering Designs. You get 12 sheets of 12 by 12. You get four each of three designs, okay? And every design has a black version and a white version. And I did show it, I think, in a previous video. And so this one just simply has like newspaper print text on it. And there is a version that has the text in black. Okay, so whatever you would like to use. And here's, here's a screen. You can actually read this. Like you can really read this. And honestly, this had to have been from newspapers some time ago. All right, we all know that using liquid glue, well, you can use Tombow, you can use a big butt, and you can apply it, but if it wrinkles, you're going to have heck laying it down, and I honestly, I didn't have a scrap piece to see if that would happen with this, because this is a much thicker weight than what I used in the last video. However, we are going to go back to the glue dots. And I am going to put one in each corner to get that adhered. Also, be careful if, if you have vellum that has any kind of a pattern or anything that is a definite up and down or side to side. Be mindful of how you're cutting it. And mine is four by five and a quarter, just a standard layer to go over. And uh, um, yes, you can really read this so... Make sure your words are right side up. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and just pop one in all four corners. And I'm trying to kind of match up um, how I'm putting them in the corner so that each corner looks pretty uniform. It may not be perfect, but I'm trying. We all try, right? We do the best we can. And hope that we are a blessing to others and that they appreciate our efforts. All right, let me tear some of that off. Put them back in their handy-dandy little box. 
and flip this back over. I've got it upside down. I'm glad I double checked. I would not. Did I put the glue dots on the wrong side? Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Absolutely, I did. Well, heavens to Betsy. Can I get them off? I can't believe I did that. I thought I had it right side up when I flipped it over to put the glue dots on. Guys, I don't drink, I promise. Maybe I should, <laughs> but I don't drink. Oh, heavens. All right. Well, I hate to be wasteful, but it was just little glue dots, right? So, and because it's on vellum, I'm getting away with this, guys. See, sometimes a vellum <laughs> can be an advantage. Now, if I can just get it off of me. Yours truly, I have broke my fingernail right there. Can you see how close it is to the quick? Uh, so we are trying to pamper and baby. All right, let, let's get this right. Okay, so this is right side up. This Now I want to turn it over. Let's try this one more time, guys. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to keep you here any longer than what it was going to need to take for this video. Oh, I'm so sorry. All right, so here we go. I'll put that one there. Okay. And right about there, maybe. So I'm not getting them perfy smurfy, but uh, you get the idea. You will be able to see these just a little bit, I'm sure. But because it's just four cute little round circles, I don't think it's going to be a detraction at all. Now, if that bothers you, your option would be to go ahead and glue down your flowers and then just put adhesive back here where for sure it would not be seen. But because these are glue dots, I don't have an issue with them showing if they're going to show. Am I kind of straight? Maybe. Okay, and I'm just lightly pressing on my corners here. Okay, all right, I'm going to hold this up best I can. And you can see that just ever so slightly. But it does not stick out like a sore thumb. I'm okay with it. You may not be. Again, you do you. Okay, let's go ahead and get this ready to glue down. Um, poor little Tombo. I didn't have his lid on him, and I didn't have him in my shot glass. Okay, that's plenty of glue. Really don't need a whole lot. And I'm going to lay this right about there. I've got about the same distance here as I do here. It's down a little ways from the top. But I want to use all this mass of a bouquet as well as I can for the front of this card. Okay. All right. So far, so good. Okay. Now, let me put my glue up and, and, and. We are going to do the sentiment. The sentiment also comes from the blessing of home. And it's have a perfect birthday. Now, I'm going to die cut it with a die from Sending Smiles, okay? There are two that come in here. Oops, some of my card samples are in here. Okay, um, there's this long one, and then there's a shorter one. Well, the shorter one, which is a bit too short, as you can tell, a bit too short. Now, I could have made that work. I could have, but for me, it was easier to take this long one and make it work. Now, for me, um, there is a little bit too much left on either end from the have and the birthday. We're gonna shorten that and I'm gonna show you how. Anytime you need to shorten a die, lengthen a die, um, 
get a different shaped size dimension out of that die cut, you absolutely can. Let me lay this right here. We're going to get out the big boss stamping up cutting and boss machine. I've already got my layers and everything put together for my die cut. And I'll lay that down. I'll line this up best I can right there. Okay, and I am going to take a piece of tape, tape this down. Some of you are probably aware that you can do this. Some of you may not be aware you can do this. So let me turn this so you can see. So I've got just a little bit of room between where the die is going to cut and the beginning of my words, okay? But I have so much more room over there. When we get done, they'll both be matched up, okay? And I'll show you how to do that. All right, so we're going to run it through. And it's actually okay to go ahead and run the whole thing through or to stop before you get all the way to the end either. Either way you want to do it is good. Either way. I need to peel this off. And I'm going to stick that right there. And peel this off. I've already used these pieces enough times. It's almost time to uh, get new ones. Okay, I'm going to move my scrap. I can get more out of that scrap. Now I'm going to put it back on here. I'm going to line it back up. I want to make sure that my um, horizontal top and the horizontal bottom is lined up. But I don't want all that. I want to shorten it and make it about the same distance. And when you're doing this in person, you will feel when that die when those edges, those cutting edges on the top and bottom line back up, you will feel that, okay? We're going to tape that and make sure that doesn't slide around on us. Wait a minute. It may have slid around on me. Hold on here. All right, we're going to do this and we're going to get it right. So I want this right about there. Yep, right about there. And I've got it. It's, it's up in there. Okay, it is up in there. It is together. I think, yeah, that one there's lost its sticky. Let me see if I have another piece where I've stuck it over here. All right, we're going to do that. Going to do that. Going to do that. And then I want a longer piece where I can go all the way around. Make sure that doesn't slide. There we go. Hang in there with me, guys. I appreciate y'all being here so much. I appreciate all the thumbs up. I appreciate every subscriber. I just appreciate all of you. I truly do. And I don't say it enough. I don't give you enough credit for your support. And for that, I'm truly sorry. I truly do appreciate you. You really make my day when YouTube notifies me that um, someone has subscribed or... You know, I've gotten some new likes on a video or even that I've gotten, you know, quite a few views on a video. So, um, I do. I appreciate that just so very much. Okay, guys, here we go. Whoops. I still have tape on the back. Oh, heavens. Where's my little pokey tool? Let's go ahead and kind of get that slid off of there. There we go. It's not going to tear my cardstock, but when you run it through a die cut machine like this and it applies all that pressure, it just kind of tends to want to take up residence. So there we go. Yes, and as you can tell, I had previously stamped it and turned my cardstock over because it didn't stamp very well. It stamped straight, but it didn't stamp solid. So thank goodness there's two sides to the cardstock, okay? All right, let me get this and put it away. And once we get this card put together, I do have just a little bit of the brand new bling in the new catalog to show you. Not a whole lot. I've got a big order coming. As a matter of fact, it's supposed to be here today. And who knows, maybe it would have 
been out there in the mailbox because I did nothing but a huge order of bling. Um, so, um, no, I don't want to glue this. I want my mini glue dots for this. I want to pop that up. And I didn't have them out. So we're going to grab those real quick. Put those on there. And I hope you see this coming together. I don't know what you think of this design. If you like it, if you like the loud colors, if it is not your thing, you may hate them. Um, the great thing about card making is all the creativity, all the possibilities. You know, sometimes I can get a stamp set or a set of dies and I get frustrated because I see all the possibilities. And it's like, oh, I don't have time. Like, I I want to do this layout. I want to do that layout. I want to use these colors. I want to also use those colors. Um, I want to do a birthday card. I want to do a get well card, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I frequently just get frustrated because there's just not enough time. And then if I'm lazy... Or if I'm um, trying to take care of another project and I don't write down my ideas, do you think I can remember them later? No. No, I can't. And I and so I do get frustrated. I want to put that on my paper. The neat thing about this um, silicone mat, when you put something on there, it don't move. So, like, if I get a bunch of these, like, down on there... Um, I have to literally pry them up, and I'm just going to leave them on my scrap paper so I can funnel all these little bits and pieces into my trash can here after the video. All right, got two more to go, and there we go. And you'll notice I didn't die cut this like two and three times like I've been telling y'all. Um, not, not for this card because it's so small. And so, let me see if I'm getting that on there straight. I think so. As long as my eyeballs aren't crooked, it looks straight. Okay, guys, what do you think? What do you think with all the loud and proud colors? Um, this definitely could have been done um, in a myriad of ways. Your imagination is the limit. So, what do you think? Do you like this? Do you like the the in-your-face bright colors? I hope so. Um, I like bright colors. I like subdued colors. Um, I kind of like it all. I really do. Okay, I did get a hold of a package of the 2022-2024 in color matte decorative dots. You have got your um, Starry Sky you have got your Tahitian Tide, and they are ombre, and I don't know how I can kind of show you because it is subtle. So you have your dark, and then it goes to light going this way. Uh, you have your parakeet party. You have the dark going to the light this way. Uh, Starry Sky, Orchid Oasis. Now, I've not opened these. I have not. Uh, the Sweet Sorbet is actually hiding up in here, but let's go ahead and slide these out so that you can see the Sweet Sorbet ones. There we go. And look, not near as intense as the ink color. I'm loving this. This is definitely more of a pink than a red. Okay, I was kind of curious as to uh, what tone they would be. And so now I know, and I'm not going to have you sit here and watch me try to fiddle and get that back in there. Because normally what I do, I totally cut off the whole sticky part and then just slide them back down in there. Sometimes when you get your package, one or two of them may be out of place. But you always get what you paid for, okay? That is not a big deal. The only other one I got was a Glossy Dots assortment that is brand new. And this just, even in the camera, just doesn't do it justice. And that's putting quite a glare with this plastic packaging. So let's just go ahead and take these out. 
that they have got a shimmery goodness to them. That is awesome. It is awesome. I hope y'all are seeing that. All right, guys. I think that about wraps it up. Don't forget about the starter kit special running all this month. Don't forget about the paper pumpkin kit. Uh, they bill on the 10th of the month, which is why I was telling you um, to be sure if you're not a paper, paper pumpkin subscriber and you would like to give it a go, be sure and head over to Raise Creek Cards at stampingup.net and uh, sign up for the paper pumpkin. Like I said, it's about $22.50 a month. And uh, at any time, any time, you can log in and suspend if you don't think you're going to like what the kit's going to be about that next month because Stamping Up always gives a sneak peek, okay? They tell you a little bit of what it's about. And if you don't feel like that particular um, box is going to be for you, if you don't care for it, suspend it. Not a problem. If you decide Paper Pumpkin is not for you after all, absolutely. You can click a button and it totally cancels your subscription. No hard feelings, no harm done, and uh, it's all good. All right, guys, y'all have a rest of your weekend that is blessed. We've got rain off and on all day. The sun is out right now, and we're going to have some rain tomorrow. Yours truly is holding an in-person catalog launch along with uh, my um, good friend, uh, Brenda, uh, who is also a demonstrator and who introduced me to Stampin' Up. So together, she and I are going to hold this catalog launch. And if you live local to me or anywhere around the Morristown area, um, if you would like to know more, then please send me an email at raisecreatecards at gmail.com. Dot com, and uh, it, it's kind of last minute, but yep, we'll get you set up and get you get you in there. So, uh, talk to y'all later. Be blessed and happy stamping. Bye.